you've interviewed for any tech role, specifically software engineering or web development, chances that, that you've gone through a technical interview. It's a few rounds of solving either coding or hypothetical problems where you have to use some unique logic to come up with a solution. As someone who has gone through a lot of them, I can tell you they're typically not easy. You have to study and practice for weeks, sometimes months, and still, the average success rate to pass a technical interview and get an offer from some of the top companies like Google, Facebook, and more is typically between 1 and 3%. Why? Why is it this way? Why have the top tech companies intentionally set what seems to be an impossible interview standard? As someone who has been on both sides of the technical interview process, I'm going to be sharing some light as to why I think the technical interview process is this way, highlighting some pros and cons of the process, and sharing what you can do to give you the best advantage going into one so you can get an offer. For most companies, the main reason why the technical interview process is set up the way it is, is to try to get as much information from a candidate to enable them to make the right decision. Companies usually want the top talent, and to get that, they have to go through a lot of candidates and gather information on them. Doing only one round of technical interview with one person doesn't give enough data points for the hiring team to make the right decision. Furthermore, the person interviewing you may have a bias, leading them to give you a negative feedback on your performance even if the interview went well or a positive feedback even if you're not the best candidate. Performing multiple rounds gives you multiple chances to prove yourself and gives the hiring team enough data points so even if one interview doesn't go well, the hiring manager still has two or three interviews to go off of to make his decision. The questions asked during the technical interview are usually technical problems used to gauge your coding, communication, and problem-solving skills. There are multiple ways to solve the problem, and the interviewer usually knows the most optimal solution. If they are doing the job the right way, they should follow along as you solve the problem, try to understand your thought process, and give you hints that will guide you towards a solution. They are typically not looking for the right answer, but rather looking to evaluate the skills I mentioned earlier. Now, the system isn't perfect, and it has multiple flaws. For one, the problems asked during a technical interview are typically not problems you'll encounter during everyday day-to-day -day coding. For many developers, studying for a technical interview is the only time they'll use specific concepts like recursion or data structures like a binary heap and more. The problems themselves can be very difficult, with some requiring you to know advanced mathematics concepts and more. Another frustrating part is that the questions you usually solve during the technical interviews have nothing to do with your day-to-day -day job. And for a lot of people, their performance on the technical interview has nothing to do with your performance in your day-to-day -day job. The algorithms you're asked to write during the coding interviews have already been written. And unless your role involves creating those algorithms, then all that matters should be your ability to apply them to your everyday work. But on the other hand, companies believe that your ability to solve or at least think through those problems communicates your thought and reasoning process to them. While the questions may not reflect your everyday task, they can be a solid reflection on how you approach problems at work and communicate with your coworkers. The coding aspect gives them an idea as to how much you know how to code. Ideally, companies want to hire someone who already knows what they're doing. For most coding jobs, you usually work solo writing code by yourself. You then create a PR that gets reviewed by the team before it goes live to production. If you're able to write code that solves a technical interview question, then writing code for everyday tasks should be a breeze. Unless it's an apprenticeship program, there is an expectation for you to not only know how to write code, but also understand the code you're writing, explain it to others, and also understand code that other people have written. Knowing, understanding, and being able to explain those data structures and algorithms can be a good way to gauge your ability to meet those expectations. The system itself is not perfect and it leads to many false negatives. It was designed to prevent false positives without taking into account anything else. The current CEO of Spotify was rejected by Google. The founders of WhatsApp were originally rejected by Facebook, now Meta, who later acquired them for $19 billion. But again, that doesn't mean that they were great engineers at the time they were interviewing. So we can keep going back and forth, arguing on both sides, but the main question is, what do you do to pass the interview? If you watched any of my previous videos, then you know the answer to this question is practice. There is no shortcut. You have to practice. The more you practice, the more you get comfortable with the questions and the easier it is to communicate your solutions and explain your thought process. The problems have a pattern. Like everything, the more you do it, the better you become. I have a video explaining how to practice to ace your technical interview. The video goes over timelines, what you should study, and how you should study it. It also gives a list of resources like PRAMP and a lot more you should check it out. This site also details most of the programming questions, grouping them based on patterns so you can understand and tackle them. Links to all of this are down in the description. There is a push for technical interviews to change and focus on whether the candidate can do the job and less on other aspects, and I'm here for it, but until that day comes, this is what we're stuck with. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and catch you on the next one.
Peace. Thank you.